Hi uh, guys, John here, and today I'm going to be doing my five must-have staple stuff packs in The Sims 4. I constantly see in Sims community groups on Facebook, I see polls over, I've got £10 and there's a 50% offer, so they're £5 at the moment, which is a good deal, I think, for stuff packs. Um, when Origin does like a 50% off, so it's £5 for a stuff pack, which is great. You can get them quite cheap, the stuff packs, in comparison to the game and expansions. And someone's like, oh, I've got £10 spare left over, which two stuff packs should I get out of the ones that are remaining over? Or I see it on YouTube in the comments for like a famous YouTuber talking about Sims, or I see, you know, on Instagram, so everyone talking about, oh, what's my favourite Sims pack, or... Yeah, there's a lot of discussion, a lot in the Sims groups and the Sims community over what packs, expansions and games. So I just thought I would do my five staple stuff packs that I can't imagine my Sims game without. These are the Sims packs that I use the most and I've had the most use from and the most enjoyment from. So for me, Sims 4 has four different routes. And they're either families, you know, you build a family, you want your kids to go to school, you have like a typical um, routine with the kids, you have the house de decorated really nice and homely, or maybe you've got a nine to five career, stay at home dad or mom. I feel like I play that game a lot in Sims and I feel like that's what Sims definitely started as. The second one is Supernatural and I think this definitely comes from the packs usually, it's not really in the base game apart from maybe ghosts um, for Sims, but for Sims 4 definitely. It's something that if you're, player who enjoys the supernatural elements, you enjoy vampires, you enjoy witches and um, wizards and you enjoy the magic element and the mystery of the of the sims which can be really impressive and it's really interesting and esca escapism. I love the supernatural element in the sims 4. I don't really, it feels very separate for me when I'm playing a family or playing a sim that is going down the supernatural route but that is definitely a big part of The Sims, but I think some Simmers don't like Supernatural at all, so maybe you can choose not to have them them packs and have it more realistic. Third one is careers and skills, and pretty obvious, but <laughs> that's when you're building up the career ladder, you're maybe trying out some of the freelance careers, you're more of an ambitious Sim, you wanna, you focus more on the, the skills that you gain, you know, there's some packs that specifically focus on that again, and that would appeal to the, the players who play more skills and careers. There's obviously get famous, get to work, um, and there's usually always a skill in each pack or a new career. And the final one is adventures. So I think, you know, some packs specifically are for that as well, you know, going on holiday. The Snowy Escape, I think, is very adventurous as well and having an, an adventurous gameplay, an adventurous sim, um, having that, you know, Star Wars kind of as well, sort of feeds into, depending on what kind of player you are, I'm definitely a mix of them all. And it depends like what sim I'm playing and what story I want them to go down. And that will alter, you know, my creator sim and alter my build mode for that character. I kind of feel like in the last few years, stuff packs have got a lot stronger and a lot more content in more recent years. I'm not sure, they were very sparse earlier in content, personally I feel like you'd get maybe one, you know, big standout feature you'd get, still kind of true, but you'd get, you know, a jacuzzi or the wishing well in the romantic romantic garden stuff, or the ice cream machine in the cool kitchen stuff. There's one big feature that you want from that pack, but generally the, the content was quite sparse. There wasn't much gameplay interaction. I think they were only started introducing skills around maybe bowling into a stuff pack. So in the recent years, they've really upped their game, I think, with the content that you get with a stuff pack and there's so much more. So my number one staple. So these five are in no particular order. These are just five of my favorite must have packs that um, I, yeah, I can't really imagine my game without them and I play them the most, the most frequently. So the first one is Laundry Day Stuff. I think this was a community voted pack and Laundry was really popular. I think it came with an expansion in Sims 3, I remember that. And I didn't miss Laundry and it seems so mundane and so boring. And when I tell people who don't play The Sims that I bought a pack to make my Sim do the laundry, they're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what entertainment are you getting from this? But 
it really feeds into the narrative and I think the pack has so much nice build items, so many nice Kratosim items, um, clothing. Um, I really like the idea of having that extra element to the game of, you know, having hampers and depending on where you are, you know, you can be off the grid, which is really nice and having that off the grid, um, you sort of wash in like a little pot outside when I was playing the Island Living uh, for a little bit and the washing lines and I think it's the reason it's one of my staple packs is because it's in it integrates into the game it's not something that I have to go to it's not a thing I have to go out of my way to go I'm playing this pack now Laundry Day is integrated into the game that I'm playing I can choose not to be there you know if you don't put the the, um, the washing machine and you don't put all of the, the laundry items in the house then it's not gonna affect it but most of the time I do and it's quite nice and it's nice to have that extra bit of realism there as well you know that extra bit of gameplay that extra bit of you know the clothes when the clothes change it's a bit more of an interaction than them just changing and the clothes going into no nowhere the space and I think as well for overall value when laundry day came out I think it was 2018 it was really a time when we saw a shift and getting a bit more content from the Sims stuff packs because I think people are getting a little bit, you know, dry of them. My number two is Nifty Knitting Stuff Pack. Now, this is the most recent stuff pack until Paranormal comes out next week, which I'm very excited for. But you can kind of see how Paranormal sort of fits into my supernatural, you know, theory. And then Nifty Knitting again. It's skills. But I think it's definitely integrated into the family's, family's vibe because it's just knitting and it's so nice to have my elder sims have something to do. I think that's what I love about Nifty Knitting. I love the skill, I love Plopsy. Plopsy is such a great element and I love that you can not just, you don't have to just use it for knitting. You can sell your paintings, you can sell all the elements of the game which are really nice. You've got a shop on the computer. Um, I really like the, the idea of unlocking the clothes as well, which is nice. And I just think generally Nifty Knitting, similar to Laundry Day, has so much more content than we have before. There's so much more going on. There's um, interesting like things to find, which I always find, I, I like, so, you know, reaching the end of, say for example, you get to level 10, spoiler, if you're still, you know, getting through your levels on, on, the, on the knitting skill, but you get to level 10 and you get this sort of, I think it's like a death sweater that you can give to someone else, which is, I think, really interesting, really cool. And I like the idea of unlocking things and, you know, I, li I like the idea of making, it's quite hard to make a living in Sims just from knitting. I tried just from Plopsy, it's really hard because it takes a while to actually start making enough money on Plopsy, but it is possible, it is possible. And I like the, the the reminiscent on the chair. I think that maybe could have gone a little bit further, but it's nice. It's nice to, you know, give... I gave, gave my Elder Sim when that pack came out, um, which I'm still playing that family. That Elder Sim storyline is the... was the knitting. And he became the knitter and there's an aspiration, which is really nice, becoming the master of the knits or something. Um, and then you can sort of teach someone else to knit. Yeah, you get that new skill. You get so much with the Nifty Knitted, and I really enjoyed it. I think that's another communi community voted pack. So them seem to be some of the strongest packs, maybe because the Sim Gurus know that, um, I don't know what that was about, but the Sim Gurus know, they are Gurus, the Sim Gurus know that the community voted for this pack. They're really gonna go that extra mile to make sure that the results are really strong. Number three is tiny living stuff. And I think this is about, it's one of the new packs again. I think it's was the one before Nifty Knitting. I'm not sure if it was last January. I feel like it was the start of the year it came out because I remember it quite distinctly coming out. And at first I was a bit like, I watched the trailer. And I was like, what actually is this gonna be? And I looked at the build, um, I looked at the build mode items. And I was a bit like, oh right, okay. So you just get like a bed and things that fold in, but the stuff really doesn't, you know, the bed still takes up a lot of space and a lot of the things still take up a lot of space to get them be in the tiny living. However, I use this pack a lot. I, I've only used the bunk beds, I think, once when I actually, so I created a tiny house, I think when I first got the pack, it was a novelty. I got one of my Sims to live in the tiny house. I think it was like a freelancer for a little bit. I enjoyed making the house. I think I integrated it with the eco-living pack. Um, but I use the pack since then 
a lot and it's again integrated into my game. I love the creator sim items, I think they're great. It's really nice clothes in there. I really love the build mode items as well, they really go together. I, you, I think I have a room on the current family that I'm living in which is just the, the items from Tiny Living. The stuff is really nice I do, and you know the Murphy bed, the, the bed falling down and the new death. You know there's not a new skill, not a new career, it's nothing major but it's, I think it's a staple pack to have because the stuff is just so nice. It's nice to have that, that the, the Murphy bed and the, the extra content in there. It's really nice gameplay. I like the idea of having like a tiny, tiny house that you can create now as well. And you can have a bit of fun with that. I think I've done it a few times, tried to make a really um, small area of a house or actually do the, the lot trait where it's like a tiny, tiny house that you're making. Yeah, I think it's a really solid pack and I think for, for, if, for £10 or £5 if you're getting it in the Origin sale. Now the next one is quite a random one. It's from 2016 I think. It was one of the, not the first, but it was, I think maybe like the, there's been so many stuff packs, but it was one of the early stuff packs, let's say. Let's say there's like two, two or three phases. It was maybe the end of phase one. And this is Sims 4 Romantic Garden stuff. The reason this is one of my staple five packs, because there's a lot of competition, you might be like, why Romantic Garden stuff? Out of all of the packs, Romantic Garden stuff. And usually it's not voted very high on community polls. And you know, yeah, it's got the wet wishing well, and that's probably its main feature that you get the well, which I really like. I, I use it a lot. I use it either in the park or I put it in the garden. I just I think it's really fun and really interesting. I love the idea of not just tossing something into the, the pool, like which is in pretty much every pack. There's like some sort of fountain somewhere, even the Star Wars, I think has something where you like do get something from um, some sort of statue. But this is an actual interaction and there's so many different things you can do. I like the fact if you're a ghost as well you can wish for life, which I actually did that storyline once. But it's also the, the, the items and I think it really improved the garden and the outdoor stuff. I really like the build mode items in the romantic garden stuff. I use them quite a lot. A lot of the parks that I have in my world use a lot of the stuff from romantic garden stuff. I think they fit really nicely in with different packs. Yeah, it's quite a, I wouldn't say it's an expected staple pack, but it's just one of my personal packs that I use a lot. I use a lot of the build mode items. I really like the wishing well. I really like some of the items in the pack and I just think it's, it's a really nice pack. Now for the final pack there is there's a lot of competition because I think a lot of these are on par, you know, for getting that fifth spot because there's so many packs and all of them bring something different. I love Vintage Glamour just because of the butler. It's a really nice feature. Should have been part of the game, base game, but hey ho, it's in the game. I love perfect patio stuff just because you get a jacuzzi. I don't really love the patio stuff that much, but I love that feature. And I think a lot of the packs have that one thing where I'm like, that's nice. I like that being in the game. Okay, for example, bowling. You know, it's nice to have a bowling alley. One of my sims has had bowling, the bowling skill. It's not really been that interesting. I think I played it once or twice, but it's nice to have. Um, but I think the, the next one where I actually use the items a lot, and I use this pack in my game more, most frequently, and I feel like I would miss something if I didn't have this pack. And that for me is the, I hope I say this right, The Sims 4 Moschinio. I actually don't know the brand. I've never even heard of it until it came into this. And it's one of the recent packs again. And I don't know if it's just because of that and I feel like you get that little bit more content, but I really like the freelance career as a photographer. I've done that a few times. I find it really interesting, really cool. Um, the photography skill was just a bit meh before because you couldn't really do a lot with it, I don't think. I hadn't used it before, so maybe you could, maybe that's a lie, but I didn't really use it properly until I got this pack and I was like, oh, you know what, that's cool, I'll try out the freelance career, and I really like that, and I really like the items in there, some of them are quite, some of the clothing is quite sparse, for, for a fashion theme pack, you don't get a lot of clothing, it's more the build items that I enjoy in this pack, I really enjoy having that extra, extra career, I love the extra tripods and the the extra screens that you get. It's probably just because I've enjoyed that one freelance career and I do like some of the build mode items and I, I like some of the, th I feel like it, it's brought something else to the game but I can't remember what it is. But yeah, so I think that might be one where people are like, really? You know, and especially in, you know, Sims 3 and Sims 2, we have like H&M and like bigger brands. I don't know in England if, 
maybe in America this is a bigger brand, but I don't really know anything about Moschino, and I'm probably not saying that right, and this probably tragic and really embarrassing but <laughs> I really enjoy playing the the new freelance crate in that pack I think for a stuff pack you get a really good solid amount it's one of the recent packs again and it probably sounds a bit lame that I'm, I've just named probably four of the most recent packs out of the five but you just get so much more I think I think Moschino is definitely the worst of the recent packs but I still use it a lot more than the other packs it feels more integrated into my game I think it's one of the only stuff packs until we've got paranormal coming out to have a career i'm trying to think off the top of my head if any others do do but i can't think of any and, and some skills as well apart from bowling i'm just trying to think of apart from knitting as well what other skills are in stuff packs previously you know we've got we've got a lot of stuff that just sort of built on stuff kids stuff toddlers stuff we already had kids, you know, and toddlers came a little bit later, but we already have toddlers, and we, but now I've got the stuff, the extra stuff for them. I do use them when I'm playing like a family pack, and obviously the my, fir my first pet stuff, which gets a lot of hate, because let's face it, it's very sparse. It's very sparse, and I would not have got it if it wasn't in an origin sale for 50% off, but I really like having like a little rodent. I think that's really cool. I do have a rodent sometimes in the house. Anyway, my f there are my five top staple packs. So I would say if you are looking to get, you know, a pack or two, in no particular order, but I feel like that might be kind of the order, laundry day stuff pack, nifty knitting stuff pack, tiny living stuff pack, romantic garden stuff pack, and Sims 4 Moschino which I may or may not be saying right. <laughs> um, they're my five staple stuff packs, so hopefully if you're trying to decide on a stuff pack, this has kind of helped. If not, then get five other packs. It depends on what you're playing, and I think, for me, it always goes back to the four staple, the four types of simmer you are. And I think you can be all of them, and I think most simmers are all of them, but I see a lot of, I don't play any Supernatural, or I don't play Families, or I don't play this, and... I think that's the divide of what's, what people want from the upcoming packs and I think, you know, I don't want adventure or I don't want that, um, whereas I'm quite willing to give all the packs a go, but as long as they bring enough, I think game packs, expansion packs and stuff packs, I think they've got to bring something to the game that is not just there, just to be there. I want something that's actually interesting and got some sort of interaction and some sort of benefit to my gameplay as well as a few nice build mode items. I want to integrate the gameplay as well. I think it's really important to have at least one gameplay extra. It, even if that's a career, even if that's, you know, the wishing well, it has to have something. Um, which most stuff packs do, but some maybe just a little sparser than others. So I'm going to do two of the videos talking about my five must-have game packs and my five must-have expansion packs. And I'm going to like put them all together um, on my YouTube. So feel free to subscribe and let me know what you think. Are you excited for the upcoming Paranormal Stuff Pack? I did a first reaction, which is my first ever Sims video. I've never done a Sims video before. But I've been literally... I'm such a Sims fan. I play it all the time and all my friends are like, you should so so do some sort of vlogging on the sims so here i am talking about my favorite stuff packs hope you enjoy drop me a like are there you tell me your five favorite sim packs below and enjoy the rest of your day